Welcome back! We found the fourth out of five star maps on Manon, which means that now we can move onward. But before we get back to the Evan Hawk, I'm gonna do a little bit of shopping around Auto City first. Uh, and there are two shops here. There's one here in the next spot over past th this one. And then there's one over by the Sith base, which I never visited, but there's really no point in going there, because there's nothing there that we can, that I really need, to be honest. Um... I'll just stop in just to be sure, because it's going to be, be the next area over after this one. But if I remember correctly, there's really nothing there that I really need. Hey, Tyber, how's it going? Ah, glad to hear it. Hey, this stuff's all for the Republic Embassy, so can you just bill it to them? Looks like this guy uh, is a sympathizer for the Republic. See, comments like this still make me wonder if swoop racing upgrades were actually something that was planned for this game, and I think it would have been cool if that were the case. Alright, what I'm interested in is this, the combat sensor. It's pretty expensive, but it's pretty cool too. So I'll buy that. And I don't think there's anything else here that we can do. Let me just stop by that other store, it's just in the next area over. Shady Road, I don't think we ever talked to this guy. Okay, why are you just standing here in a corner? <laughs> I always find it funny how in some of the alien dialogue, like this one, you can hear angrier versions of like the normal sounding dialogue. Like he, he said something like "Winky smack Duma," like most Rodians say, but he said it in a very forceful way. Let's see what he's up to. Yeah, like right there. Well, we don't need Pazak cards. We've played enough Pazak for one round of this game. I wish we got to see Auto North and South. That would have been interesting, but there's only so much you can include in a game, I suppose. Alright, I believe the store is over here by the Sith Embassy, if I'm not mistaken. Your towels, yes. You got any armor plating for my swoop bike? <laughs> I thought this garbage was free. You actually sell this junk? You fish are a strange breed. Don't worry, junk man. When I want garbage, I'll be back. Looks like these folks around here aren't too sympathetic to the Sith, and I can't blame them. I'm not here to make fun of you. Have you considered relocating, maybe? Let's look at his inventory. And I don't really think there's anything here that we couldn't pick up anywhere else. It's mostly droid stuff. And while droid heavy plating type 3 is amazing, I happen to know that we're going to get it eventually anyway as the result of an item drop. So I'm not going to really worry about that. In fact, I think there's better droid armor plating than that. Um, so we'll take care of that later on. I'm trying to conserve as much credits as possible and just buy things only when they're not available anywhere else and I, I could use them. 
Let's go ahead and just transit back to the Hawk. We're done on Manon. Alright, let's talk to everybody here. I don't think Mission will have anything new to say because we haven't done the thing with her brother yet. Hey there, what can I do for you? Maybe if we get these tat glands... Yeah, okay. So nothing new for Mission, but Candorous should have some new stuff to talk about. Yeah, what do you want? Tell me more about the Mandalorian Wars. The war we had with the Republic was supposed to be the most glorious battle in our history. But it was a very costly one. I guess we didn't think of how much we could lose in it. How much did you lose? There weren't many of us after that last battle. Mandalore himself was killed at the hands of the Jedi Revan. The best of us could not defeat him. After that last battle, those of us that survived were stripped of our weapons, our armor, and our basilisks. Revan's forces destroyed them while we were forced to watch. Those who hadn't fled earlier were left with nothing to call their own. No weapons, no armor, only the honor of having fought in the battle we just lost. For many, this was not enough. While the rest of us were sent into exile on the Outer Rim, they tried to relive the old days, raiding worlds. They're nothing more than bandits now. And you eventually came to Terrace. Yeah, I came to Terrace. And forcing for Davik was not stimulating. The gangs on Terrace and Davik's rivals were trash. They give no thrill in battle, no honor or glory in defeating them. It was like stepping on bugs. I sought worthy challenges, but the best that Terrace could offer were nothing to me. But I think now, with you, I may finally find opponents worth fighting. I'm honored. Maybe later I'll tell you more about what it was like to work for Davik. For now, though, we should get on with our lives. Is there something else you want to know? Your choice. Let's see if we can talk to him about Davik. Yeah, what do you want? And we can't. Your choice. Oh well, let's see about HK here. Statement. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. Let's try restoring more of his memory. We've got a really high repair skill now, so I think we should be able to do the rest of this. Affirmative. If you believe your skills are up to the task, Master, then I can certainly guide you through the process. Request. I only ask that you be oh so very careful, Master. Let's get started. Statement. As you wish, Master. You are already familiar with accessing my central control cluster, correct? Now you will need to... And now rewire the last three relays. Yes, good. Well done, Master. I believe your operation was a success. Accessing new memory. Access complete. I have recovered the last of my deleted memory, Master. Unfortunately, my history is still not complete. What? Why not? Answer. As I did inform you, Master, the majority of my memory is still locked within my core. That can only be accessed by the appropriate stimuli. And I have no idea what that stimuli might be, unfortunately. Sadly, it seems my true origins will always be a mystery. So are you sure your core isn't just damaged? Observation. If it was, Master, your restorations will certainly have ensured that the proper stimulus restores my core's functions. Hmm. Sadly, that could have already happened and we missed it, and my core was too damaged to activate. Oh, woe is me. Well, maybe we'll find out what this is eventually. Query. Wouldn't you be, Master? Here I am. Surrounded by all these meat bags, and all I desire is true perfection. Surely there are more droids like me out there. Or is that too much to hope? Be careful what you wish for, HK. Objection. Oh, fine. Laugh at me, master. Humiliate your pet droid. Go ahead. This comment is kind of a bit of foreshadowing for the next game, because there are going to be more HK droids in that game. And he's actually not going to be very happy about it. Correction. 
That would actually be my first owner, Master. The first I can remember. I had completed an assassination in Mandalorian space, though I have no knowledge of what my target was or who sent me. Regardless, my motor function had been damaged and I could not return to wherever I had been sent from. A Mandalorian soldier claimed me as Booty, I believe. <laughs> he repaired me, poorly, I might add, and proceeded to use my assassination protocol to raise his rank. Looks like no one can resist using your protocol. Query, do you not have enemies that you would desire eliminated, Master? If my protocol still worked, would you not use it? Well, hmm, depends on exactly wh how we used it. Statement. C. I provide a function that is useful to others. They merely must learn to use it properly, I believe. Exactly. At any rate, it seems that my Mandalorian owner finally decided to send me against Mandalore himself. My poorest performance, sadly. I can't see that ending too well. Answer. I was captured by this Mandalore during the attempt. He was able to reverse my programming and send me after my own master. Oh. It was quite distressing. There was little I could do. Needless to say, I dispatched the Mandalorian soldier efficiently. Once I deactivated, I believe I eventually ended up on the black market and was sold to the hut on Slaheron. <sighs> My darkest day. So you killed that master directly. Statement. So I did. I am not very proud of that master. The soldier seemed very startled, I must say. You're just a traveling piece of bad luck, aren't you? Objection. That is so unfair, master. Have I not brought you a great deal of satisfaction? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to hear the answer to that. Statement. You are a very harsh master, master. I like you. <laughs> so can you remember anything else? Answer. There are a few Mandalorian implants that I can activate now. They will improve my performance. Beyond that, master, there is nothing more I can relate to you. With luck, we will discover the stimulus to unlock my core very soon. All right. Because of your repairs, HK-47 will now regenerate at a rate of one vitality point every three seconds and has gained an additional plus two bonus to his dexterity. Which is amazing, I should say. And that's all the repairs we can do on HK and all the storylines that we can uh, talk to about with him for now. Um... Let me go ahead and equip everybody, because I happen to know that Suvum does not have anything on Yavin for us to buy that's new. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, just go ahead and work on equipping everybody anyway. Let's do Karth first. Let's see. Headgear. Let's give Karth that combat sensor that we bought. And let's see, I'm going to try to give him the advanced stabilizer gloves, which I think I've got on somebody else. Let me see here. I thought I had those gloves on somebody. Okay, maybe I didn't. I guess I, I don't have the advanced stable. Oh wait, I think I accidentally sold them, didn't I? Didn't I say I... Didn't I mention that earlier? I think I may have. Well... Hmm... I think I'll stick with Bredgic's gloves for now. We got Kalinord's battle armor, which is awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and just put energy shields on people just to be on the safe side. Except I think for him I'm just gonna give the normal energy shields and save the good melee stuff for other people. And I happen to know that the other pistol that we're going to get for him is going to come on Korriban, so let's save that for later. And let's see, mission. I'm going to do you next. Mission. 
Hmm. Okay, we'll keep her with the neural band. Gloves are the infiltrator gloves. Good. Let's give you this and we'll give you one doing shield. How about that? And these are good, I think. Except uh, I meant to give her one of those Mandalorian assault rifles I sold earlier too. Crap. Ah, uh, I should have consulted my notes a little more thoroughly, guys. I'm sorry about that. See, Zalbar, though, I want to give him that Ichani foil, because that is a pretty awesome weapon. And although it's not a balanced in the offhand weapon... Wait a minute, is Baka's Ceremonial Blade... Okay, it's not either. Even though it's not, it's, it's still a really good weapon to have, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and give it to him. Um, gloves? Let's give you these. And as far as the implant goes, I happen to know that the implant that I really want for him is also going to be on Corban as well. If I remember correctly. Let's give you a Dewing Shield and a Mandalorian Power Shield. Why not? Okay, Bastla. Lightsaber? Good. Nerve Amplifier Belt? Good. Let's see, we have a Master Robe. Actually, let's keep you on that. Circle of Suresh, I'm going to keep you on those. And I want to give you the Ariadu Strength Amplifier Gloves. Alright, Candorous, you're next, buddy. Let's see, for you, I am going to give you... Hmm... I don't really need these awareness-related things. Um, you know, I'm going to give him the General Hard Advisor. I think that'll be good. And as for the uh, gloves... Hmm. I think the gloves I actually wanted to give him are on Tatooine, and I forgot to get them, so I'll keep them on that for now. Now well, let's give you an energy shield, why not? And we gave you the CNS strength, and I'm going to keep you on your ritual weapon. Good deal. Juhani. As for Juhani, it's another situation where the headgear I want to give her is on Corban, so I'll keep her on that for now. Jedi Knight robe is good, but I think I'm going to give her a Master robe. And let's see, the lightsaber is good. And I'm going to sell that, because I'm not using stealth. I really am not. I think... Hmm, it's probably a choice between one of these or one of these. Fortitude or Reflex. Well, I think I'm going to keep her on Fortitude for now, just because she's the, the soldier equivalent. And as for... The gauntlets, I'm just going to put these on for now. I think this is yet another situation in which the item I'm hoping for is on Korriban. Let's see, HK. We got some upgrades for you, buddy. Although I think these computer-related things I'll give to Mr. Uh, computer Droid. Uh, let's give you the Advanced Gravity Generator and... Yeah, Advanced Stun Ray, I'll keep you on that. Heavy Plating Type 2 we've got, which is great. Environment Shield Level 3. And this is... I'm still keeping him on that, because it's an amazing weapon. Um... Let's give him... Let's give him that, just for the sake of it. And let's see, Jolie... We got you on that. Okay. Hmm, yeah, I'll keep him on the Verpine headband. We'll give him these strength gauntlets for now, but uh, I'm going to try to get him some other types of gauntlets later on, hopefully. And I think we're pretty good. I just have myself now. Let's see what I can get myself. Lightsabers are good. I got Bregic's belt on, but... Hmm... These are pretty cool. Um, wait, 
I was going to give the advanced stabilizer gloves to somebody else. I was going to give them to Karth. That's who I was going to give the, these to. Let me take these off me. And let me give them to Karth. There we go. And me, I really want to have those General Harden power gloves. Let me give Can... Wait, who has the General Harden power gloves now? I know I gave them to somebody. Yes, okay, you take Brejik's gloves. I am going to take these. These are cool. And let's see. I'm going to keep that advanced biostabilizer mask. Implants. Hmm. I want to get implant level 3 so we can get some more good stuff. Uh, let's... Let's go with cardio package for now. I'm going to change things up a bit. And as for this... I'm going to give the advanced adrenaline amplifier for now. Just see how it goes. Alright, I think we're pretty good with those. So let's just go ahead and see what we got as far as upgrades are concerned. Um, we got more crystals, which is great. And we got Opala and Bondar, which are pretty good. Um, hmm. This is good against droids. And this is good against blasters. So apparently this is better than Opala. What does Opala look like? Hmm. Well, that has more energy, but this has more blaster bolt deflection, and this has massive criticals. I want to say Opala is better than this stuff. Um. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to keep it on that for now. Short lightsaber. We got Damond, which is pretty cool. I think I'm going to put one of those Genroar things there. And I'm going to give myself a Damond back there. Alright, Bastila. What do we got? We got Damond and Rubat. I'll keep her on that. And let's get everybody else's lightsabers here. We need some good stuff for Jolie. Let's give him Luxum and... General and Juhani one of those and next door that ought to do let's see the range weapons let's see what we got here Ordo's repeating blaster let's go ahead and install those we can't install anything there Okay, well, we're going to have to find more stuff. Mayway. Let's see, Baka's Ceremonial Blade is upgradable. Let's go ahead and take care and outfit it. And armor. Let's give you some armor reinforcements. You're good. You're good. Wait, who's wearing... Oh, wait, we're not equipping Darth Bannon's fire armor. Okay, that's good. All right. I think we're good to go on equipment at this point. And like I said, we're going to have even more stuff once we finish Korriban. Nothing to do in there. Let's go and visit Jolie in the medical room. Got something on your mind, do you? You mentioned something about your adventuring days? Did I say that? Strange the tricks memory plays on you when you get older. Come on, Jolie. I know you've got something to tell me, buddy. Didn't I say that my past was my affair? You don't see me poking and prodding you with questions, do you? Well, sure, but you're you and I'm me. That's understandable, right? You've already said so much, I'm curious. I'm not here to satisfy your curiosity. No staring at the old man, that's what the sign says, damn it. Besides, <laughs> you don't really want to hear about me. We're talking ancient history. Probably before you were born. History bores kids. Proven fact. Not this kid. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to strike back at him with this. Oh, fine, fine. Have it your way. Just don't cry about it later. 
Yes, yes, I was an adventurer. Happy now? I wasn't even done with my Jedi training back then. I had a full head of hair and an eagerness to see absolutely everything. Sound familiar? The Council was never happy with willful, brash Jolie Bindo, you see. Even less so when I began my smuggling career. Smuggling career? Don't look at me like that, damn it. I wasn't always the wrinkled coot I am now, you know. But I can still fight, too. So wipe off that smirk I see there. At the time, the Yukata system was interdicted by its own king. He preferred to keep his people starving and poor. All the better to oppress them. The Senate was trying to negotiate a peace. But they were getting nowhere as usual. And I decided I wasn't going to wait. I found myself a ship and a partner. And we began smuggling food and supplies to the Yukata citizenry through the blockade. Where do you get the credits for all the supplies? Well, we didn't buy all the equipment, per se. Some were happy to donate goods. Some we just, uh, knew had more than they could use. Aha. Uh -huh. So you stole it. Stole is such a harsh word. They would have donated those goods readily enough if they were compassionate. I considered it a tax on the Greek. <laughs> we only got caught once. A lone Yukatish frigate shot us down and forced a crash landing. I thought the Force had abandoned me, as I remember. What happened then? Well, as it happens, getting shot down turned out to be very fortunate. That day was the day I... You what? Well, that... that was the day I met my wife. Ah. You were married? You know another way to get a wife? <laughs> but yes, that's when I met her. I... If it's all the same to you, I'd prefer to stop talking now. My mouth is starting to draw flies. Let's see if we can talk to him a little bit more. Got something on your mind, do you? What do you think of Sunri's verdict? Innocent. Hmm. I don't know what to make of it, to tell the truth. Do you think justice has been done? Well, not really, to be honest. But that has little to do with the law, doesn't it? A sad state of affairs, that. Too bad, really. Sunri was a good man once. Ah, I don't want to talk about this anymore. My jaw aches. Got something on... Oh, nothing more. Oh, I get it. Alright. We got another piece of Joey's story. Maybe he'll tell us more about his wife here later on. Let's see, nothing for T3 and Zalbar. That leaves Karth and Bastila. Let's see how they're doing. I don't know if we can talk to Karth about anything more, but maybe we can ask him about his son. What do you need? You want to talk? Talk about what? The only thing I want to do right now is find Dustal. If he's alive, th there's just nothing else I want to think about. I'll understand if we can't look for him right now, but if we could, it would be a huge load off my mind. Well, we're about to go to Korriban here in a little while, so let's go ahead and look for him while we're there. How can I help? I'd like to talk about what you said before. About giving in to your emotions. Yes, I did end that quite abruptly, didn't I? Perhaps a master could have addressed my questions with the proper wisdom, but I never should have brought it up here, not with you. Part of my purpose on this mission was to guide you in the way of the light, to help you avoid the temptations of the dark side, but I fear I've failed in that task. I don't think I'm the proper Jedi to guide you. I'm no master. You should have remained with the Council. Why do you say that? The fact of the matter is, I have never possessed much skill at controlling myself. With the bond that joins us, it seems I have even less. You have maintained the path of the light side. But it has been in spite of my influence, not because of it. It's increasingly obvious I am unable to guide you properly. I'm glad that Bastila recognizes that. But I don't think that means that she's unfit to even be with us or anything like that. I don't know. I think I may have made a very big mistake. I simply hope that you are not the one who pays the price, ultimately, for the fact that I can't help you enough. It's okay, maybe we can help each other. That's a kinder response than I deserve. And I can see there is wisdom in your words. You... you continue to be there for me, don't you? Even after I keep pushing you away, you're still around when I need you most. You're like no man I've known before. And you're nothing like what I expected you to be after. After the Council sent us on this mission together. We're made for each other, Bastila. You have to see that. I need time to think about all this. Things are... They're not going as I thought they would. 
We should continue on with our mission for now. Hmm. Can we talk to her again? How can I help? I guess not. Then I suggest we move on. Alright, I'm going to try to talk to some folks again. And if I can't do that... Oh, wait, I forgot. Juhani. Let's talk to her first. Ooh, she looks awesome in the dark Jedi uh, robe stuff. Yes. What is it? Is something wrong? I was remembering Taris. I'm sorry, Juhani. No, it's all right. I think I'm over the worst of it. I apologize again for lashing out at you. It was not your fault. It was a horrible place to have to live. At least in the lower cities where the non-humans tended to get relegated. Living for years in a place with no sun, living off the trash dropped from the upper levels, and the meager pay doing back-breaking labor. And the Rakuls. There was always the danger of Rakuls coming up from the sewers, or more mundane predators living and working in the area. My family and I struggled each and every day to make something of our lives. We could only go so far. Taxes from the corrupt government, more fees from the gangs controlling the streets, and whatever was left paying for what food and medical supplies we could afford. No one would help you? And of course, there was the constant bigotry and hate from the more affluent and human citizens, mm. lording their wealth over us living below. Every once in a while, a rich human would come down through the lower levels with his droid entourage just to see how the wildlife lived and laughed at the mockeries that were our successes. But I have come to meet many decent humans in my travels since those days. Indeed, some of the greatest people I have ever met are human. Like who? The Jedi who encouraged me to join the Order. The one who was with the group going to fight the Mandalorians. She was human. I am sorry. I am getting away from my point. If there even was one. Sometimes, I curse the day my parents fled to Taris. But then again, if they had not, I would not be where I am today. Your parents? Another story for another time. For now, we must continue our own epic. To save the galaxy, if we can. Indeed. Can we talk to her again? How may I be of assistance to you? Padawan? I was wondering if we could talk again. What is it you would like to speak to me about? Tell me more about your past. Well, I mentioned before that my parents had fled to Taris. Perhaps I can tell you about that. Please do. In the early days of the Mandalorian War, there had been fighting closer to the Outer Rim worlds. Near the world your species comes from? Cathar was there, yes. My people had a great reputation as warriors, and that appealed to the Mandalore version of honor. Oh. They sought to test themselves against us, I think. Test themselves by bombing our world, slaughtering my people while they slept or while they ran. How did that happen? They swooped down from space across the world, firing at anything that moved. They used ships in space to destroy all orbital facilities and bombard the surface. We did resist, and in spite of their violent attack, we did stave them off for quite a while. But in the end, we were doomed. For warriors who seem to uh, be fixated on honor so much, that doesn't exactly seem like the most honorable way to attack or to uh, fight a war. I mean, I would actually, you know, tr start talking to the Cathar first and, you know, agree to fight. And if the Cathar were such great warriors, then I don't really see exactly uh, why they couldn't agree to have a battle. Or maybe I'm just too much of an idealist, I suppose. We were not members of the Republic. Cathar was beyond the edge of the Republic, in the Outer Rim. And besides, they could not have known. Our interstellar communications were the first things the Mandalores hit. All other short-range communicators were jammed. We were on our own. We knew what was coming. We had fought the Mandalorians in the first war against Exar Kun and the Sith. We knew there would be no mercy for us. The most we could do was pack the few of our people who survived onto what few ships remained and send them off into space as fast as they could. Most did not make it. But you survived. 
My parents carried me as a baby with them and were lucky enough to escape. They fled as far as they were able and eventually settled on Taris. They could stand running no further, I think. But Taris was a horrible choice. Dominated by humans, intolerant of other species, made everyday life unnecessarily hard. How did your family cope? My father... My father turned to stimulants. Oh. He spent much of his time in local bars and dives. But we are warriors. It runs through our blood. And when he was on stims, he... he... he became foolish. He let his warrior nature get the best of him. Hmm. So he would get intoxicated, and he would fight. And finally, one day, he would die. That's sad. Killed by a man who provoked him into a fight and killed him like an animal. I... I am sorry. I... I cannot talk about this any longer right now. I think that is the conversation we need to have to trigger Juhani's side quest. How may I be of assistance? What is it you would like to speak to me about? Oh, okay, maybe we have this one still. After my father died, my mother was left to support me alone. A single non-human woman, living in one of the worst, most violent slums on Terrace. Ouch. It was not easy for her. How so? When my father was killed, it seemed that something in her began to die as well. She worked. She worked as hard as she was able. But over time, she began to waste away. I later learned that she was unable to get enough money to feed both of us, and had to start borrowing from the exchange. A band of cutthroats and smugglers. But even that was not enough. She hid what she was doing from me. She gave most of her food to me so that I would be strong, but she herself was suffering deeply from it. In the end, she could go on no longer, and collapsed at the cantina where she worked one day. That is so sad. She never recovered. There was nothing really that I could do for her. She left me no money, and no doctor would see her without being paid first. Mm. I sat by her bed for days as she lay there dying. I never want that to happen to someone I care about ever again. But there was still the money she had borrowed. She had never paid it back and made no provisions for her death. You must understand. The exchange is brutal. They care nothing for the life of a sentient being. They are the major suppliers of slaves on Taras. You were enslaved? They thought it would be appropriate that, with my mother owing them money, the debt should be passed on to me. And with no way to pay, they took me by force. You have no idea what this is like to be bound like a beast and treated as such. It was the worst time of my life. They treated me like livestock. They were waiting for a buyer to give them some credit for me when the Jedi came to fight the Mandalorians. And they freed you? The Jedi could not abide by what they saw there and drove the exchange from the face of the world, freeing those of us imprisoned there. But the Jedi soon left to fight their war, and I was left with a dream. What did you do? I swore that I would become a Jedi. As soon as I had enough money to do it, I bought passage on a freighter headed for Dantooine, and we both know what has happened since then. Juhani. I am grateful to you for having given me the opportunity to fulfill my dream, rather than become what I hated. Someday, I may make it up to you, but for now, let us keep on the task at hand. Good deal. I think that's the last conversation that we needed to have, and I don't think there's anything else we can talk to her about. How may I be... What is it you would like to speak to me about? Are you doing alright? I have been doing well, I suppose. As well as I can. But I am more interested in you right now. Do not mistake me. It is just that, even though we have traveled together for a while, it seems I know next to nothing about you personally. What do you want to know? We have been traveling together since Dantooine, but I know nothing of you before that. Would you... Would you humor me and tell me a little bit about yourself? What is there to tell? Your job, your childhood, your life. I am sorry if I am making you uncomfortable. I will fully understand if you choose not to answer. No, it's alright. I greatly appreciate your taking the time to talk to me. How did you come to be on Dantooine? Besides the obvious, of course. 
I was in the Republic fleet that was destroyed over Terrace. Terrace. It always seems to come back to Terrace for me. Yeah. I am sorry. I, I, I get distracted. What did you do before ta before that? I was a scout for the Republic Armed Forces. A life in the army. Not my career of choice, though. We Cathar cannot seem to adjust to regimented organizations like the military. But I have heard that it appeals to males of your species. Fighting? Defending? That is what we as Jedi seem to be called upon to do. Perhaps we are not as unalike as I had previously thought. But again, I seem to be wasting your time with my, my carrying on. I apologize. It's alright. I... I have been watching you for some time. I wonder if you have noticed. I have been thinking of how far I had fallen, and how you exemplify the code of the Jedi. I find myself ashamed. Aw. You should not be so hard on yourself. But I have so little to show when I compare myself to you, and that makes my shame even worse. That I had so easily fallen to the dark side that I could convince myself that by injuring my master, I became a great force of evil in the galaxy for my pride, my hubris, for the inner rage that all of my species feels. Sometimes I wish that I had not been born this way. You have nothing to be ashamed of. I am sorry. I start to talk, thinking about how you stay strong to the path of virtue and justice, and I find myself whining again about my own inadequacies. The Council would be proud to see that you had learned your lessons so well. Well, thank you. How may I be of assistance? What is it you would like to speak to me about? Nothing for now. Of course. Alright, I think that's everything we can talk to her about. I want to see if the others have anything to say, because I know Candra says more. Yeah, what do you want? Your choice. And I know Bastila is more, and I want to see if maybe I can just step off and on the ship. And maybe that will do the trick. I'm not entirely certain, but I'll see. I want to get as much of this out of the way before we go to our last planet. Or last star map, rather. Yeah, what do you want? I guess You're not. Okay. What about Bastila? She's the one I'm rather uh, interested in right now. How can I help? Here we go. When we last talked, you said you needed time to think. So. You have been patient with me, haven't you? I suppose you deserve an answer. But you have to understand how difficult this is for me to say. Yes, I, I think so. With all my training, I should be able to control myself better than this. But you're not like anything I expected. You're not like any man I've ever met before. I find myself watching you when I don't mean to. I'm thinking about you when I don't want to. It isn't supposed to be like this. What are you trying to say, exactly? Every time I try to call on all my teachings to calm myself, they fail me. You have such power, such passion. I don't know if it's due to the bond between us, but I'm drawn to you. I don't think that's such a bad thing, though. The Force is a part of you, as is your power. But that's not what attracted me to you. It's more than that. Maybe it's the bond we share. It gives us a certain intimacy. Yes, yes, yes! If I could, I would return to Dantuin. I need to be away from this bond of ours. I need to weaken it. I need to be anywhere but near you. But Malak must be stopped. My own feelings are nothing when compared to that. Yet I know this could affect the sake of our mission if it's not resolved. I can't let that happen. Oh, but you can let it happen. Just give in to your feelings, it's fine. I think... I think we should have some privacy for this. Come with me. Alright. You're stronger than I am, and there's no point in telling me otherwise. You will be a great Jedi, I think. I hope. In some ways you make me feel weak, like I'm caught up in the wake of our destiny. But at the same time, you make me feel stronger, more alive. So, what does this mean for us? I feel more alive when I'm with you. I realize now these feelings are part of the bond we share. The Jedi Council surely realized this. They knew my loyalty to the doctrines of our order would be tested on this mission. 
By facing and overcoming my feelings for you, I've learned a valuable lesson about control and the dangers of emotion. This is an important step in understanding the Force. I'm sorry if this is not what you wanted to hear, but I felt that it was important you know our infatuation was nothing more than a result of our powerful bond. No, I disagree. I had... Come on, Vastla. Yeah, you're just trying to explain this away, but you do have feelings, and that's not a bad thing. You're the one who can't face the truth. Malak has to be stopped. How can I do that if I let myself be blinded by my feelings for you? It's not blinding. I'm going to stop Malak, Bastila, but I want to do it with you at my side. You... you mean it, don't you? But how can I be sure you're not making a mistake? I... I have to resist. I have to be strong for both of us. You don't always have to be strong, Bastila. Even just this once. But I don't... I mean, I can't. Malak will... <laughs> Shut up and kiss me, you babbling fool. Oh my... Sadly, we don't get to see that. <laughs> we shouldn't have done that. It was wrong. The Jedi are not allowed to fall in love. I guess it wouldn't have really worked anyway because we have this mask on, which would have been kind of weird. We're not... It didn't feel wrong to me. We just kissed. It was... It was a moment of weakness. When I kissed you, we shouldn't have. I'm sorry. No. I know we both wanted it, but we shouldn't have given in to our desire. We're Jedi. We can't act like this. Not now. Not while we still have to deal with Malak. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't blame you, but it was a mistake. I have to get out of here before somebody sees us together. No, Bastila. Aw, what does the journal entry say? Oh, looks like we completed the Bastila quest. Okay. What does the one for HK say? Okay, the stimulus for the core. Hopefully we'll find that here at some point in the future. Does she have anything more to say? How can I help? I want to talk to you about what happened between us. We've we've already been over this. It was a moment of weakness, a stumble brought on by unbridled passions. But my emotions are firmly in check once more. We need to stay focused on stopping Darth Malak, and I want the others to stay focused as well. I don't want them to get suspicious and start gossiping about our little encounter. So until our mission is over, we need to act with discretion. We shouldn't speak of this anymore. Not until Malak is defeated. Alright, even though Karth is right there, so yeah, I guess she's not uncomfortable saying that. Alright, well, I think... That is pretty much all the talking I'm going to do for one video. So, I think I'm going to stop by Suvum uh, to sell our stuff. But we'll start journeying there in the next video.